Welcome, everyone, to another ISSA alert. I'm with Doug Hoffman with Normie, Dr. Gavin McGregor-Skinner with ISSA. Both gentlemen are wide awake and ready for action. Am I right? Yes. Yes, sir. Gavin was nodding off earlier before we pushed record, but that's in the past. We will look forward and focus on the future. Actually, we're not. We're going to go to the past. We're going to go to Tuesday, July 1st. And, Doug, I believe you had an event. And give us a synopsis of what that was and tell us what's coming next. And I really, really want to encourage everybody to go look at that video and watch it. We had an opportunity to listen to Dr. Andrew Heyman, chair of our medical advisory board, share with us the science behind what he's done in determining how the environment can affect an individual's health. Incredible information that he shared with us uh, last week. And it set us up to be able to talk about what we're going to be talking about a little bit here next week. But the point is, is that we, we now are able to connect the built environment to the healthcare industry. And uh, as I've said, and people have told me, they keep saying over and over again, this is huge. Not been done before. Having somebody like Dr. Heyman, Dr. Gavin, other doctors on a medical advisory board to be able to help us navigate through this jungle of information has just been phenomenal. That's what we did last week. And Gavin's not just another pretty face. He has something to add to this conversation as well, I hope. Really interesting what Dr. Andrew Heyman said last week, Doug, to all of us. And he did challenge us. He challenged us with saying, asking us, what is the medical standard? What is something that we can measure that raises the level of cleanliness in the indoor built environment that we can actually measure to show that where the way that we're cleaning disinfecting, remediating, restoring, even building these buildings are making it safer for not just a few people, but for everyone, because everyone is different. And that really takes us back 32 years, Doug, back to Dr. Michael A. Berry's book on protecting the built environment, cleaning for health. And here we are now today having a very similar conversation. But what we are showing everyone, we've moved the needle. We are giving you know, the normie and the, the collaboration we're doing with ISSA and then with Dr. Andrew Heyman is giving everyone opportunities. I will say that the link to the the Tuesday event from July 1st is in the video description below. You can watch it there and see that interchange. Great content there. And every time we do one of these little preview interviews, we'll continue to put links below so people can keep up if they have to watch it after the live event. But that's the past. That's the rearview mirror. Doug, tell us about the next one. It is July 8th, I believe. It is. It's coming up this uh, next Tuesday night at impact.normie.org, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Free, completely free, not going to cost anything. But here's the two things that ca that are the takeaways, I think, from last week. One is it's not just about mold. It's about biotoxins, which means actinos. Uh, it means uh, endotoxins. It means a lot of things besides just mold. And so the cool thing about this is, is that we have training programs in place that are going to help our assessors figure out what those issues are so that that can then be connected to the healthcare industry, because that's what doctors are looking at. They're not just looking at mold. They're looking at other uh, environmental contaminants. Uh, the other thing that I, I think is important, and Dr. Heyman said this last week, I really have focused on this for a long time. We are, in a lot of ways, the front line. We are the paramedics as it were, oftentimes we're the first one to talk to a client about how their environment is affecting them. Now, we can't talk with them about medical things, but we can certainly be educated, which is what he's going to be doing. That's going to be exciting. I'm going to want Dr. Hey, uh, Dr. Gavin to talk about that, which is really cool about some training that he's going to be doing through the university for us. But this week, we're going to talk about how restorers, remediators, and assessors can become a part of this solution. We've got a program in place, and we want to talk about how that works. He's going to be there to help us share information so that the professional can figure out how he can do a better job providing a comprehensive assessment. Sounds like it'll be a nice training session. Gavin, you must really look forward to this type of training. It's easy to access. It's What's the price, Doug? Uh, Tuesday night is for free. For free? I mean... The only thing I wish you could get is like a beverage while you're there, but I guess you got to get, bring your own bottle. <laughs> yes. So. You ask your wife to bring the coffee. So Gavin, what do you think? Wrap it up for us. Yeah. Jeff, Doug, and, and what everyone's bringing the right people at the right time to the table, because um, the most common oversight that we deal with in the whole industry 
is being able to recognise subtle or slow developing signs of, say, moisture damage in a building. But more importantly, that moisture damage leads to microbial contamination. So we use a lot of terms. Everyone's going to become a, 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 a disease detectives and building health managers. And these are critical terms because through education, empowerment, training, we're going to provide the necessary knowledge, skills and abilities by connecting our industry with medical professionals. And how many stories do we all have, Jeff, where, oh, this happened and we thought it was this. And then we, then we went in with the right tools and we found, no, it was something else. And as Doug always says, people, yep, they're the canaries in the coal mine right now. We'll get, we, we see the clinical symptoms, but if we don't fix the building, if we don't correct the build environment and we put that person back into a sick building that has moisture damage, has microbial contamination, guess what? They're going to get sick again. And so we're now we're doing this more holistically, more comprehensively, but more importantly, we're doing it based on science, evidence, and we're doing it because we're data-driven. We always say in our industry, which I think is so important, prognosis without diagnosis is malpractice. When you have assessed the environment correctly, you're going to have a better outcome. And that's the goal. That could be, that could be my first tattoo. Douglas, I don't have a tattoo. What's my... <laughs> We're not None. going to ask to look either. So <laughs> disease detective, is there a, is there a course for that? <laughs> there should be. I like that. I, can, I like that term. I can tell you that Neva keeps telling me that we're running out of letters. We have 32 certifications, so we'll have to figure that one out. Certified Disease Detective. CDD. CDD. They have it. <laughs> well, guys, we should we should wrap it up right now. I think we're we're going out on top. So Tuesday night next week, the link below to be there. Just hit the website, be part of this event, get this training you need, and become a disease detective. <laughs>